Poles from the Blue Bowl. Last poll from the Boo Bowl. Boo Bowl. Well, that makes sense too. Boo Bowl. Except for that sounds like, like the bubonic plague. They had those big pustules. Weren't those called Boo Bowls? <laughs> So let's not call it the Boo Bowl, shall we? The Blue Bowl. That's better. Yes. Good. Hi, everyone. It's me, Moody Boo, and I'm back with another Polls from the Blue Bowl. Hmm. So, and just to remind you, I will pull three, just blindly grab three random samples out of here. Some of them are very old, and if they're too old and nasty looking, I'm not going to test them. I'm just going to probably pitch them. If it's a perfume sample I've actually tried before or something like that, I'll set it to the side and repick. Um, and then I'll pick three from this and then one from the black box. So, and the ones for in the black box, this is just a conglomeration of perfume samples. The ones in the black box are ones that I've gotten recently that I've really wanted to try. And I didn't want to wait until however long it took to get to it in this menagerie of perfume samples. So those are separated for that reason. All right, let's do it. Very quick, off the top. Oh, this is one of those Bulgaris. And this is one of those, uh, those small little dabber samples from Bulgari, the La Gem series. And this is the green one. And this one is Lilea. I have not tried this. And I'm, I've got, I've tested some other perfumes um, this morning. So I'm not going to put this on my skin. I'm going to put them on paper. And I hate the dabber ones when I have to use paper. They're not quite so bad when you uh, um, do them on your skin. But on paper, it's not as good. So this will let you know at least if the perfume is going to leave some weird brown skid mark on your skin or not. And this one looks pretty clear. It's just these little jobbies. Hmm. It's very green, very fresh, as you would be suspect um, from having a green colored dot. It's very nice. It's light, but it's a dabber, so it's hard to tell. I saw somebody do this trick. I thought it was really clever. I want to say Delicious Delights um, recommended it. You know, you put <clears throat> from one of your spray um, samples that you get, you know, if you get a little decant that's like one and a half, two mLs, three mLs, or something like that, just take the stopper out of the dabber sample and put the spray her in and then you can spray it on your skin and I would do that but the only problem is you get like one wearing and that's it because it uses a lot more perfume than a dabber does it's very light but it's very nice like I said it's fresh clean green a very good springtime I should suspect kind of a perfume very unisex but it smells very light Hmm. So I'll see what's in it. Now, according to Fragrantica, Lilea is a uh, mint, uh, mastic, mate, or mate, and orange. I definitely get the orange. Mint, I smell mint in a lot of different notes, and I don't smell a lot of mint in this. It's very clean. It's very fresh, like I said, very citrusy. The orange, I absolutely get. And there's a hint of earthiness to it, too, leafy kind of earthiness that I'm going to assume is the mint, but I don't get that cold, 
you know, Arctic kind of a, a feel from it like I do with um, mint. You know, in the dry down, that may change. It's very light. I think you could definitely pull this off spring, summer. Very unisex. It's very pretty. All right, moving on. All right. And if I feel another Bulgari, that kind of a box, I won't grab it so that there's some variety in the houses. Okay, what's this? Oh, it's a Joe Malone. This one is, oh, there's two in there. There's two, there's two. They are lime basil and mandarin. Is that one I have? And this one's oud and bergamot, and I do have that one. I'm going to spray it just to see. No, I don't have this one. I don't think I have this one. I better check. I do not have this, Joe Malone. I thought maybe for a minute I did, but I do not. And this is the, like I said, the lime, basil, and mandarin. I love this one. You get all those notes, the citruses, the basil, because there's this earthy herbal kind of a, not medicinal kind of an herbal, but more leafy, fleshy kind of an herbal. Oh, that's pretty. All right, I better see what's in it. Oh. I think some people, some women might interpret um, this to be a little more on the masculine side. I think because of the basil, maybe. But I'm loving it. It's clean. It's fresh. It's, like I said, has that meaty, leafy kind of a smell to it without it being too earthy or dirty. Oh, it's very pretty. Very pretty. Okay, I'm going to look up the notes. Oh, so this is lime and basil and orange and bergamot and vetiver. And there's some other herbs in there like thyme and there's iris, a little lilac accord, some patchouli. It's so pretty. This is one that you absolutely could wear, you know, any time. Um, it can be casual or formal. I think I think it's absolutely unisex. I think you could wear it because of the basil year round. Like it, like I said, it, it, I think the patchouli and the basil and the vetiver give it that maybe the thyme give it a little that meaty leafy kind of a smell along with the freshness and the citrusy clean kind of a smell. Oh, I don't get any powdery from it though, from the iris or anything like that. I don't get a lot of iris, honestly, or lilac, but oh man, all the rest of it, it's beautiful. Oh, I really like this one. I wish I had discovered this at the beginning of the spring. But you know, to me, 2020, I want to be the year that wasn't. I'm just really over it. Let's move on and hope 2021 is better. Oh, I really like this one, but I'm going to come back to all of them at some point towards the end of the video. All right, next poll. Last poll from the boo bowl. Boo bowl. Well, that makes sense too. Boo bowl. Except for that sounds like like the bubonic plague. They had those big pustules. Weren't those called boo bowls? <laughs> so let's not call it the boo bowl, shall we? The blue bowl. That's better. Yes, good. All right. We got a Bulgari and a Joe Malone. So let's see. Oh, scared. Oh, keeps looking like it's going to fall on my face. <laughs> okay. Oh, hit me in the head. All right. Ooh, I have not tried this one and I have wanted to try this one. This is by uh, Paris Monte Carlo and this is Santal du Pacifique. Yeah, I've been wanting to try this one. So, yay. Get my high class paper testers ready for the introduction of the fragrance. 
Ooh, ooh, damn. Where have you been all my life? Holy shit bombs. Oh, this is nice, at least right now. It's nice. It could change in two minutes. I am going to give it another blast because the sprayer is kind of shitty on this. What? Uh, oh my God, this is like chocolatey sandalwood or something. Sweet, earthy. Oh my God, I'm loving this. Oh. First blast, I get chocolate sandalwood. A slightly sweet, almost a milk chocolate sandalwood, not a dark chocolate. Ah! Oh! <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> he's used to it by now. Oh, this is just lovely. It's sweet, but not heavy sweet. Just, just a whisper of sweet, and woody. And almost a hint of gourmand because of that. I what I'm interpreting as a chocolate note. Ah, this is beautiful. Oh, I have to know what's in it. Oh my God, that's so good. On Fragrantica, they just have sandalwood and floral notes. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe there are some sandalwoods that smell chocolatey. I don't know, but this is a milk chocolatey sandalwood in my opinion. The florals, it, it might be like a vanilla orchid or something like that might be in there. Oh, damn. I really like this one. <laughs> oh, hell to the yeah. Now the chocolate note's starting to calm down a little bit, what I was interpreting as chocolate. It still has that warm, sweet wood kind of a smell. Oh my God, this is delightful. Oh, now we're starting to get almost into that lumber mill um, background kind of a smell where it's fresh, moist cut, um, wood like cedar. This is delightful. It's very unisex and you could wear this year round. Now the the more it dries down a little bit more of the cedar as opposed to sandalwood smell is definitely coming out and there's a hint of medicinal to it. Just a, a breath of medicinalness to it. The, the florals are gone if they were ever there to begin with. You know, like I said, it might have been a vanilla orchid I was smelling. Oh. We will come back to that. But my initial reaction was, whew. and now I'm like, okay, bring it on in. Let it sit there a minute. See how it smells after it's dried down a bit. Oh, it's still pretty good. <laughs> All right, those were the three picks from the blue bowl. Now we'll go into the black box. All right, so we got all of those and I keep adding to it. <laughs> Get a big one. I don't want a dabber, a Lucky Scent dabber. I like the sprayers better, so here's one. I don't know this one. Brirana, Brirana uh, Plum Rose. I don't know it. So let's give it a shot. And here it is, Rirana Plum Rose. I don't know, I've heard of Rirana. There was one in there of Rirana's that I really liked. Oh, this came in a big, huge bunch of Rirana um, samples from uh, uh, Door Perfumes or Door, what is it, Prestige. All right, and this one is Plum Rose. It's pretty light. I'm going to give it another blast. I might have missed it the first time. All right, that should do it pretty good. Pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. Ooh. Oh, that's kind of nice. 
Now, I'm not a big rose person normally, especially if it's a watery rose, spicy rose, um, something like that. I like a sweet, creamy rose a lot of times. But this is a little different. This is a fruity rose, but not a watery rose. Um, this isn't bad. Not bad at all. It's pretty much what I'm smelling is plum and rose. Right now it's kind of light. It might have something to do with not wearing it on skin. I hate testing perfumes on paper and not skin. The only time I really find testing on paper is advantageous is when you're just going um, through a store and you want to grab some, you know, a few um, different samples to walk around for a while with and then come back. And maybe out of those samples that you have on paper that you're walking around with, you might pick one or two that you might test on your skin when you go back, if you go back. Now this is getting kind of musky. It's, it's sweet, it's fruity, it's definitely rose, but there's a hint of musky to it. This is almost like mixing the musk of Narciso Rodriguez um, perfumes with the rose from Stella McCartney's perfumes. One of her bottles, what was it just called, Stella? I went through two or three bottles of that. I was crazy about that. And that was a rose perfume I adored. And this one's kind of growing on me. This does remind me a little bit of Stella. Stella! Sorry. I get, you know, I, I devolve. All right, well, let's see what's in it. Yeah, it's, it's getting a little more earthy with the dry down. It's not quite as light, sweet, and just magical as Stella is. I just love that. Now, Stella did have a hint of clean, almost soapy in there. As I remember, I haven't worn it in years. This does not have that. This is very pretty. This is plum, rose, clove, uh, raspberry, amber, patchouli, and melon. Now, that tartness from the plum that I probably am interpreting as a musky note is kind of fading. I don't get a lot of clove. There is a hint of uh, spice to it, I guess, just a just a whisper of it. But the raspberry, I think, it, and the melon are coming to the fore a bit. But the amber and patchouli are what is giving it this depth and this just beautiful earthbound kind of it, it, it's like those two notes are just barely hanging on to this this perfume that just wants to fly away and um, go out into the cosmos oh, this is very pretty I am gonna try this on my skin same with uh, Santal du Pacifique by Paris Monte Carlo I'm probably going to try that one on my skin too. Well, we'll go back to it. Oh, I really like this. Yes. And I think it was Coco Nana's was the one for Marie Rana I was dying to try. And that one didn't blow me away. I did try it briefly, very quickly. As soon as I got them, I went and tried that part. And it was good, but it wasn't all I had hoped it would be. But that was one test and one test only. Oh, this still reminds me of Stella. Oh, it's so pretty. So pretty. Rirana Plum Rose. Now I'm going to go back to all of them and see if they've changed much. All right, the uh, Lalea. Boy, it's really light. It's really gone the wayside here, but it's a dabber. I still don't get the mint. It's mostly orange and a little bit of earthiness with that orange. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm kind of on the fence about this one because I really like the orange note in it. But I don't know. And the bottles make me nuts because they don't have a stand with them. They're just all pointy, I think. And I don't like that. So I'm going to say no to this one.
I think. Yeah. I, maybe I'll just stick this in the on the fence and someday come back to it. This is the Jo Malone Lime, Basil, and Mandarin. Oh, that's still really nice. This does remind me of something. And not necessarily a perfume, but a smell. Somewhere I've been, I have smelled this. Not the perfume, though, but this, this basil and citrusy kind of a smell. I'm almost thinking a restaurant. But this isn't necessarily gourmandy. I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to remember, but I am loving this. Wow, it's very clean, very clean, very fresh. It does have a hint of soapy to it, but this is a beautiful soapy. Oh, I may have to get this one. Oh, I really like this one. I think this has to go in the S pile. Oh, that's really pretty. Very, very. And I think, again, because of that basil note, you could wear it year round. Male or female? Oh, yeah, I think I got to get this one. And this is the Paris Monte Carlo Santal du Pacifique. Oh, <laughs> that's very nice. I do wish that milk chocolate note hung in there longer because now it's just lumber mill, but it's beautiful. It's, it's warm. It's it's not dry, but it's not quite that wet wood smell. It's got a hint of tart that tells you it's sandalwood. But it almost is like it's sandalwood and cedar. Oh, that's really nice. But I'm on the fence with it because I was in love with it with that chocolate note. I have a lot of really good sandalwood perfumes. So I'm kind of on the fence with it right now. Yeah. I'm going to put this in the, on the fence, which blows my mind because that opening was delightful. Too bad it didn't last. And just to come back to Rirana Plum Rose. See, now there's a muskiness that's coming back into the, the foreground again. It was kind of played in hide and seek there for a while. And it's not a rose muskiness that I'm interpreting necessarily. I almost wonder if it isn't the hint of tartness from the raspberry mixing with that hint of tartness from the plum and then with the rose giving that makes it kind of smell rosy musky or something. Oh, but I really like that. Okay, I think what I'm going to have to do with all four of these is test them on my skin. I'm just not satisfied with saying no to any of them at this point because I keep thinking about each one of them. So I think I've got to test all four of these on my skin. And I'm not able to do that at this time. But if I change my mind, right now I'm going to say I'm, I'm on the fence with all four of them. None of them at this stage are making me go like Fleur de Marb or the beginning of Santal du Pacifique. Um, I got to buy now, buy now, buy now. But this Brirana Plum Rose is pretty damn good. And so is the Paris Monte Carlo. And so is the Joe Malone. And really that Bulgari isn't bad either. So yeah, I'm going to test all of them. All right. Well, that was it for another Pulls from the Blue Bowl. And whew, we're done. And I'll be back. I'm trying not to put too many more in there, but the blue bowl isn't getting too many more, but the black box is. So whatever. Well, thank you so much for being here, everybody. I'll be back soon with hair flying around. Thanks, Bowie. Anyway, I'll be back soon. Don't forget to like and subscribe and ding the bell and comment if you want if you don't it's all good i still
love you. Use your own nose. Peace.